I only started making satisfactory videos recently, and I've been trying to structure my content in a way that follows the game's progression starting from the early game, which would have put the topic of this video way down the line. But I personally tried out the new gear and immediately decided to break my schedule and make this video now, because I am so absolutely blown away by some of this new gear, it would be a crime not to talk about them as soon as possible. So in this video, I'm gonna cover just the new weapons and utility gear introduced in Update 6, and how to make use of them to gain a level of firepower and convenience that was not even remotely possible in the past. And at some point in the future, I'll probably make an actual comprehensive guide on exploration and combat, covering everything and with more detail and context. So, we're gonna start by talking about the new stun and shatter rebar types for the rebar gun, which are very easy to get and very useful in the early game. And then we're gonna move on to the high level stuff, including those that require smokeless powder, which is an item that's not so easy to get your hands on, especially if you wanna fully automate it. But that makes perfect sense because the ammo types made from it provide you with a gigantic, comically large power spike. But let's talk about the early game stuff first before we go there. You can get the stun and shatter rebar as early as the rebar gun itself if you can make it to the respective resource node. Stun rebar requires quick wire, which is caterium, and shatter rebar requires quartz crystal, which is quartz. What you can do is find your first Caterium and Quartz nodes, set up the smallest possible factory with storage containers at the end and a few biomass burners loaded with solid biofuel, and collect the results the next time you come by. By the time the biofuel runs out, you would have also built up a sizable deposit of the materials that'll not only be enough to knock out all the research nodes, but also craft you enough ammo to last a while. Each time you come and collect, you can also bring more biofuel and refill the burners, so it'll make more for next time. The stun rebar is probably the new ammo type whose usefulness is the most obvious. It's a rebar shot that stuns the target you hit for 5 seconds. During these 5 seconds, you could safely hit them with other weapons, like the Xeno Zapper or Xeno Basher. If you use the Basher, you can actually easily score enough hits to kill most creatures before the stun effect wears off. This makes for a very safe and also ammo efficient way of clearing creatures assuming you can hit the one or two stun shots, which is a step up from using iron rebars or melee weapons by themselves. Even if creatures were never a problem for you, this is much faster and more consistent. It does have limitations though, if you're fighting multiple creatures, the usefulness of the stun diminishes because you can never stun the entire swarm at once, so spider swarms are still a problem. Moving on to the shatter rebar, this is not as useful as the stun rebar, but it does have a few good uses. It's basically a shotgun shell, you can use it in place of melee weapons, and it'll essentially be a melee weapon with longer range at the cost of consuming ammo. It may actually have higher damage output than either of the two melee weapons though. Hatchers die in 3 hits from a basher, but they die on the first hit from a shatter rebar if you're close enough to land most of the fragments, which means the shatter rebar does at least over twice the damage from a single swipe with the basher. And speaking of hatchers, this is indeed where the shatter rebar actually really solidifies its usefulness. It's the only early game weapon that can one-shot hatchers, which allows you to kill hatchers before they can hatch anything. A little bit further on into the game, there's also two new types of Novelisk ammo. There's the Gas Novelisk and the Pulse Novelisk. The Gas Novelisk is kind of fun, but I don't think it's that useful. It creates a gas cloud that makes creatures run away. I suppose it's meant to save you if you're being overwhelmed, but I don't see why you couldn't just throw a normal Novelisk and kill them instead of gassing them. I suppose you could throw one of these at a swarm from really far away and it'll separate the swarm so you can kill them one by one.
Pulse Noblisks are more interesting. They create a pulse that launches players and creatures. This can be used to push away creatures, but it's probably the most useful for boosting speed and airtime with the jetpack. Although you can get this as soon as you get to steel, I would say ignore this unlock until you reach oil. For starters, it requires crystal oscillators, which can only be automated using manufacturers. Handcrafting crystal oscillators in the crafting bench is extremely slow, so you want to avoid that at all costs, especially for use in a consumable. Pulse Noblisks are also pretty much useless anyways until you unlock the jetpack. Again, there's just not a whole lot of point pushing away creatures instead of just throwing a normal Noblisk and killing them. It might be useful on your co-op friends when they're standing next to a cliff, but after you do it, don't tell them you got the idea from me. Once you do have the jetpack though, the Pulse Noblisk is actually pretty useful. Depending on where you position yourself relative to the charge when you detonate it, you can launch yourself horizontally and glide really fast and far, or you can launch yourself vertically and reach greater heights than you otherwise could on a single jetpack charge. Is it worth the inventory slot to carry the ammo? Absolutely. Is it worth the tedious process of making it? That's going to depend on how tedious the process is for your current point of progress. If you've already automated Noblisks and Crystal Oscillators, then sure, because it's as simple as combining those two together. But both of those items require materials from three different types of resource nodes, so if you haven't automated them already, it might be quite a hassle. I just wanted to throw this in here, apparently the Pulse Noblisk also allows you to be an absolute psychopath. <laughs> now on to the class of weapons that hold most of the firepower currently attainable in the game. This is where you get introduced to a new item known as Smokeless Powder. Smokeless Powder is not easy to get your hands on, but the ammo types produced from it are god tier. I'll start with the most exciting one and that is the Explosive Rebar, which is made from combining Iron Rebar with Smokeless Powder and Steel Pipes. This thing is the only Rebar type with splash damage and it does insane amounts of damage per shot. It can one-shot hogs with splash damage alone if you land the shot close enough to the hog. It can take out multiple spiders in one shot of course, and with direct impact it kills most creatures in one or two shots. At this point you can leave behind your stun, shatter, and iron rebars entirely because this replaces all of them completely. If that's not good enough, it also does environmental damage, so you can use it to remove trees, rocks, and poison flowers. It's actually a better way of clearing those than the regular Noblisks, given that it can be fired much faster. I think the rebar gun's actual reload time is about the same as the Noblisk, but you don't have to charge up the shot like you do have to charge the toss on the Noblisk to get any kind of range. You do get the Smokeless Powder variants of the Noblisk as well. There's the Cluster Noblisk and the Nuke Noblisk, which are probably much better at properly getting rid of not only the trees, but also the bushes and small plants on the ground. But as far as just getting rid of the tall trees to make room for building a floating platform of foundations or building railroad, the explosive rebar is already masterful, as you can see. Although speaking of the new Noblisk types, the Cluster and Nuke Noblisk are also good. They're not as responsive or versatile as the explosive rebar, but they do have larger areas of effect. 
The nuke can often clear out an entire nest of creatures in one explosion, and it has the largest area of effect out of any explosive. So I suppose this is the endgame option for deforestation. It does leave behind radiation though, but it dissipates pretty quickly. I remember in high school my teacher showed us a Cold War documentary that said at the height of the arms race, nuclear weapons technology actually evolved so fast that scientists said they could potentially make a nuclear hand grenade. The only problem was finding someone dumb enough to throw it. Well, here we are. In terms of cost, the Cluster Noblisk requires smokeless powder, and the Nuke Noblisk requires that and encased uranium cells. I would like to also issue a warning about the Cluster and Nuke Noblisk, and to a lesser extent the Explosive Rebar as well. Because their explosion radius is so huge, you might end up killing things you can't even see, including Lizard Doggos, which is one, evil? <laughs> and two, possibly bad for gameplay, because they are the only infinitely renewable source of power shards, and I don't think they respawn after they die. So be careful, you don't want to back yourself into a corner in that regard. Last but not least, let's talk about the rifle and its three different ammo types. All three ammo types for the rifle requires smokeless powder, the three ammo types are the regular rifle ammo, the homing rifle ammo, and the turbo rifle ammo. The regular ammo is honestly kind of disappointing. It's a hit scan weapon, which means the shots hit the target instantly when you pull the trigger, but you also get increasing spread on the crosshairs after the first shot, like guns do in a lot of other shooter games. So it's more accurate than the rebar gun, but also less accurate in a different way. I just think that for anyone with remotely decent aim, you're better off using the explosive rebar in place of this for any scenario it could be used for, and this basic ammo alone is not enough for most people to even bother with the rifle. The homing rifle ammo is the true money. This is basically the smart ammo from futuristic shooters. The bullet will guide itself to the target and guarantee accuracy as long as you were pointing the gun in the general direction of the target when you pulled the trigger. On top of already having higher accuracy, it also does higher damage than the regular rifle ammo per shot. Homing rifle ammo is the ultimate solution for dealing with spiders. Spiders are small, fast, and zigzag a lot instead of moving straight towards you, which makes them harder to kill with other weapons. But this weapon is basically made for them. Nowadays, I'm almost excited to see spiders because I get to take revenge for what they did to me in the early game. Whenever I see some, all I have to do is pull out the rifle, blindfold myself, and hold left mouse button. The ammo is not easy to make though. They require high speed connectors. I was hoping for quick wire, but given how powerful they are, I guess that's fair. The last type of rifle ammo is the turbo ammo, which I think is also a slight disappointment. The bullets do less damage, but you do get a much bigger magazine and a much faster fire rate. The problem is that it takes time for it to ramp up to that high fire rate, and while it's still ramping up, you've got a really weak gun for a few seconds. I suppose this could be useful for dealing with extremely large spider swarms like the ones in the cave that has a uranium node, but then so is a cluster novelisk. Even if it were invaluable for those cases, for something that requires turbo fuel and aluminum casings to make, I was expecting it to do slightly more. So that is all of the new weapons introduced in Update 6. To automate all of them, you will have to build a factory that utilizes every single type of resource node except limestone and nitrogen gas. This is still excluding gas noblisk, which require biomass and thus cannot be fully automated. 
You can give up turbo rifle ammo to get rid of bauxite, and nuke noblisks to get rid of uranium, which means you can automate everything else before completing space elevator phase 3. And I would say that this is also the best time to do so, because it's also the best time for exploration. For one, you already have access to all the most important equipment for exploration. You've got the jetpack, the gas mask, most if not all inventory slots, and the smokeless powder ammo types are the last pieces of the puzzle, so once you get yourself those, exploration doesn't really get any easier, even if you continue to put it off until later. On top of that, after phase 3 is exactly when the game really ramps up in automation difficulty, so you could really use as many hard drives as possible to give you as many alternate recipes as possible. What I would do at this stage is load up SCIM, travel the entire map, and loot every single drop pod except the few that you can't open without items inaccessible until after phase 3. Around this time, I will also try to build all the geothermal generators, and now that update 6 has come out, I think it's also a great idea to cover the entire map with the new and improved radar towers, which would permanently mark all the resource nodes on the map, as well as display their purity and whether or not they've already been claimed by one of your miners, so I can be amazingly well prepared for the complicated stuff in the second half of the game, where picking build locations becomes much more important. If you are going to build an ammo factory, keep the scale of the factory small and don't overbuild. These ammo items are only consumed by you, the player, and in Satisfactory, for every minute you spend fighting creatures or clearing forests, you also spend hours just building things, during which you don't consume any ammo, but the ammo factory you built will still be running in the background replenishing your stock. I recommend making some combination of Explosive Rebar, Homing Rifle Ammo, Cluster Noblisk, and Pulse Noblisk, which are the most useful out of everything. You can of course do all four, in fact I'm currently trying to do that, but it's going to be difficult considering that they require many different parts made from many different nodes, and as far as I can tell there's no single spot on the map where all of the necessary nodes are close together. You won't need a large amount of any part, but you will need many different parts, so getting all the materials to the same place is definitely going to be the hard part, and possibly a nightmare if you don't have some of the subcomponents already automated, as well as an established transportation network to move parts across the map. Smokeless powder alone requires sulfur, coal, and heavy oil residue, which is crude oil. I believe there's only one spot on the map where all three of those nodes are even remotely close to each other. Heavy oil residue is also a fluid, which means no handcrafting, and also introduces its own set of complexities in some setups. If you want the homing rifle ammo so you can take revenge against spiders, you also need high speed connectors which is oil, caterium, and copper. Explosive rebar and all novelisks also require steel, which is coal and iron, and then pulse novelisks also requires crystal oscillators, which is quartz, iron, and copper. I suppose maybe it is worth waiting until after phase 3 to automate these, because then you can get drones, and that makes getting small amounts of many different inputs much easier. I hope this video got you up to speed on all the new ammo types introduced in update 6. I looked around and found that nobody has really made a video on these yet, so I thought I would do it because they are pretty epic and really don't deserve to be overlooked. If you learned something useful, please leave a like on the video, and let me know what you think about these new ammo types in the comments down below. You can also subscribe and check out these videos if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, good night.